morning. Welcome to Wednesday morning's reflection. Our reading today comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 1 through to 14. If you've been following us on Sundays, you'll know that Garth uh, preached on some of these verses. Paul writes, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. But fornication and impurity of any kind or greed must not even be mentioned among you, as is proper among saints. Entirely out of place is obscene, silly and vulgar talk, but instead let there be thanksgiving. Be sure of this, that no fornicator or impure person or one who is greedy, that is, an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore do not be associated with them, for once you were in darkness, but now in the Lord you are in light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Paul's already reminded this church in Ephesus that they were dead, dead in their sin, but have now been made alive in Christ. He's trying to shape their world view, which formerly was dominated by the place where they live. You know, we have that saying, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Well, that's all very well unless you live in Vegas. And that's precisely what the Ephesians had to do. That's where they lived, in the Vegas of the Roman Empire. The place was dominated by the temple worship of Artemis, the goddess who has a statue with a thousand breasts on it. You get the picture. So Paul's saying, look, you've left that old life behind. Uh, Elsewhere in his letters, he will say it needs to be put to death. Here he says it needs to be put off and replaced with a new life. Uh, In case you're thinking, well, there's a a hierarchy of sin here for Paul, he says place entirely out of place is obscene and silly talk, so be careful about that. Be sure of this, no fornicator or impure, impure person will have a part in the kingdom of God. But then, yeah, and you think probably, yeah, that's that's right. But then he goes on to say, neither will anyone who's greedy. And that's starting to hit the mark for perhaps all of us. So don't be deceived, says Paul. There's no hierarchy of sin here. You just need to get rid of all the stuff that's holding you back. And the more that our sin comes into the light, becomes exposed, the more we see it for what it is. And the more that God is able to transform us and so he says come on you've been made alive in Christ you were dead in sin so rise from the dead and allow Christ's light to shine into you he's asking the Ephesian church to reshape their imagination to be imitators of God so how do we do that how do we allow God to shape our imaginations and well I think we watch what God does and then try to do it his way how do we discover this well we read our Bibles and we see how God deals with Abraham how God deals with Moses we see how God deals with Ruth and Deborah how God deals with the prophets Jeremiah and how how God is ultimately above and above all and above all how God is in Jesus 
especially as we look at Jesus, Jesus interacting with Herod, Jesus interacting with Mary Magdalene, Jesus and Judas. It's all Jesus. As we start to soak ourselves in this story, our behaviour starts to become shaped. God reveals himself to us. And more than that, his ways to us. Today, the church worldwide celebrates a man called Peter Chanel. He was a missionary uh, to the South Pacific and he was martyred in 1841. Uh, he really struggled when he arrived in the South Pacific. He struggled with the culture, he struggled with the language, but the biggest struggle of all was actually Westerners had already arrived before him, traders, and they behaved abhorrently. Uh, they'd exploited the people badly uh, and they were deeply hurt by this. But patiently, Peter Chanel starts to imitate Christ in their neighbourhood, as it were. He incarnates himself, as it were, in their neighbourhood so that the Christian faith becomes attractive. And one of the princes of the islands decides that he's going to follow Jesus and asks to be baptised. And the king is enraged and orders Peter Chanel's death. He is clubbed to death. Uh, Chanel reportedly said that it was of no matter because actually what had happened was that the Christian faith he knew had been planted in that very culture there. And so he, as he martyred, imitates Christ. He lived a life of love in that place. So today the church worldwide thanks God for his saintly example. But Paul's writing to ordinary saints in Ephesus and he's writing to ordinary saints in Formby. He says, none of this stuff should be mentioned amongst you as is proper amongst the saints in Ephesus, as is proper amongst the saints in Formby. So let's have our imaginations renewed so that we can indeed begin to imitate God, live in love as Christ loved us, loved us and gave himself up for us. Amen. Well, I'm going to read the prayer for today. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless and have a cracking day.